So we have nothing because we are poor in spirit. We have nothing in our heart to make what God wants to see us. We have nothing to bring to God for the promise. So we mourn. And that's exactly when we are comforted because He became like one of us. And then now we have something to bring to God for the promise. Okay, we are in the series called Dividing Jesus Offered Once for All. Uh, it's been quite a long time since we started this series and some of you may feel like it's, it's going quite long. What I can say is that it's going to be a little more, uh, like one month or two months more. So please stay with me, uh, have patience a little more. Uh, because kind of at the end of this series, we are going to talk about a very controversial um, topic. Well, we already talked about it before, but we are going to talk about it from the perspective of the sanctuary, which is really the core message of our church. And I think how to understand the sanctuary message is really the key uh, to understanding the whole message of the Bible. So I hope that this can be um, something that you guys can uh, benefit from. So today is uh, already eighth part. So I entitled today's sermon, The Secret of Fine Flower. The Secret of Fine Flower. Um, until last Sabbath, until uh, part seven, we talked, we looked at the burnt offering in the whole Bible. So we kind of browsed all the burnt offering stories in the Bible. Not every single burnt offering story, but uh, like very big and um, very important uh, stories about the burnt offering. And today we are going to move. I kind of want, want to remind you of the two categories to which the five offerings belong. So the first three offerings, burnt offering, grain offering, and peace offering, uh, this is an offering that belongs to the category of making the covenant with God, establishment of, uh, of the covenant. So, so this is not a sacrifice. Of course, grain offering is not a sacrifice, but this is not about for forgiveness of sin, but for establishment of the covenant with God. So the fact that the burnt offering was offered means that the covenant was made after understanding the law and swearing to obey the law. So we looked at this also through the story of Jethro. So he, well, I think we, uh, I'm going to talk about the Jethro story just a little bit in the, in the, mid in the middle of the sermon today too. Uh, but anyway, when someone offered the burnt offering, that person entered into the covenant. So Jethro agreed to the terms and the requirements of the covenant when he heard all the stories of the God of Israel from Moses, how he delivered the, chi uh, the children of Israel um, from Egypt. He was very moved. He was very surprised to, to hear about a God like that and, and his heart was melted with the faithfulness of God. And actually this is the idea of repentance from the Bible. So repentance is not really about confession of our sins, but repentance is, is, is primarily about our heart being melted with the love, with the faithfulness of God. So when Jethro was uh, impressed by what God had done for the children of Israel, his heart was kind of uh, attracted to God. So we all know that he was a priest in the Midianite wilderness. So he had been serving many gods before, but he chose to serve God instead. 
So burnt offering is considered a proof of being born again. Being born again. And after the burnt offering, well, actually, grain offering had to be offered almost always along with the burnt offering. So every time a burnt offering was offered, grain offering was also offered together. So the grain offering here uh, is actually what it looks like to specifically fulfill the requirements for the covenant because through the burnt offering, the one who offers the burnt offering kind of swears to obey God's law and grain offering shows what it looks like to specifically to fulfill, to obey the requirements, obey the law for the covenant. So the word grain offering is mincha and that literally means a gift. And the second meaning is tribute. And the third meaning is a gift offered to a divinity or a sacrifice. It's pretty much about uh, a gift, a tribute. So tribute is something that, uh, that was offered to the stronger tribes when the weak tribe uh, made a covenant. So they, so they had to pay the tribute to the stronger tribes, uh, as we talked about before. So weak tribe, strong tribe, between these two tribes, there was a kind of covenant. So the strong tribe promised to provide the protection for uh, the weak tribe. And in order for the weak tribe to receive, to guarantee the protection, the weak tribe had to pay the tributes with like animals, grains, and cloths. Um, but when they made a covenant, they had to present a specific plan as to what to pay, as to how to pay, as to when to pay. So they should agree on what, when, how to give specifically when making the covenant. So this is the picture of the grain offering. So when, when we make the covenant with God, when Abraham made a covenant with God, God gave Abraham a specific plan in his dream. You remember uh, in Genesis chapter 15, when God asked Abraham to bring the animals and cut into pieces, and Abraham solemnly passed between the cut pieces, swearing to God, I will obey your laws, your commandments. And then Abraham waited for God to appear and walk and pass between the cut pieces. But in between, before God appeared and passed between the cut pieces, God appeared in Abraham's dream and he gave a specific plan to Abraham, right? Something like, okay, your descendants will go into a strange land and they will stay there for about like 400 years, right? And then they will come out with great possession and then they will finally take the possession of the land that I'm promising you to give. So God gave a specific plan about the promise that God is making for Abraham. So humanity and Abraham had to give a specific plan as to how to show his obedience to God. We also should have a specific idea, a specific plan of what and how and when. So here, um, Exodus chapter 29, day by day continually the burnt offering had to be offered, but when every time the burnt offering was offered, uh, kind of in the middle, with one lamb shall be one-tenth of an ephah of flour mixed with one-fourth of a hin of pressed oil and one-fourth of a hin of wine as a drink offering. So every time the bread offering was offered, the grain offering was offered together. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 1. When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, when anyone offers tribute, uh, from uh, using the terms of the covenant at Abraham's time, 
Um, when anyone bring offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. So this is a basic kind of rule of the grain offering. So we are going to talk about what the fine flour means and and the oil and the frankincense mean in the grain offering. Well, when Jesus was talking about many parables, this is one of the parables he told, Matthew chapter 13. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. So here, Jesus is talking about fine flour. Well, Ellen White actually um, here, when he comments on this parable, in the Savior's parable, leaven is used to represent the kingdom of heaven. It illustrates the quickening, assimilating power of the grace of God. None are so vile, none have, none have fallen so low, as to be beyond the working of this power. Uh, yeast is, is the symbol of the power of grace. And in the grain offering, the, the oil and the frankincense is a symbol of, uh, of the working of the grace of God. So the working of grace of God can reach anything because it says none are so vile, none have fallen so low as to be beyond the working of this power. In all who will submit themselves to the Holy Spirit, even though they are so vile, they have fallen so low, if they choose to submit themselves to the Holy Spirit, a new principle of life is to be implanted. The lost image of God is to be restored in humanity. So here, fine flour means a state of a heart of sinners, so vile and fallen so low, for it, it's been marred and smashed by Satan and sin. But because they still want to submit, still want to obey God's law, there is room for the Holy Spirit to work for the fine flour. Right after sin entered this world, it became impossible for sinners to fulfill the requirements of the covenant, as we already talked about before. It is so even when we, sinners, have the longing desire to obey God's law. Which means, even though we have the longing desire to obey God's law, we are, we are like um, fine flour, so we cannot put all the flowers together to make uh, good bread. It is not something, we don't have anything in our hearts that can make that happen. So something needs to be put into our hearts so that our flowers can be put together to make bread. So our heart was like that, this pure, when we were created at first. But when we sinned, when sin came into this world, our heart became dark, completely dark. So before sin, I think I've shared this slide several times before. So before sin came into this world, our heart was like this. So our nature was inclined to lean towards good things, which is to seek others good. But after sin came into this world, our sinful nature changed completely. So our sinful nature uh, is now inclined to lean towards on this side, right, to evil. So if our sinful nature is left alone, then all the time we lean towards evil way. And that's why God promised, I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. You know, when God made this, uh, this statement, when, when God proclaimed this, God meant to shine the light into our hearts like this 
because uh, because of sin that came into this world into our hearts our hearts turn completely blank so it is only when God shines his light into our heart it is only when God puts enmity into our hearts we can choose things for God we can choose things against Satan so uh, great controversy uh, page 505 it says when Satan heard the declaration that enmity should exist between himself and the woman and he and between his seed and her seed he knew that his efforts to deprave human nature would be interrupted that by some means man was to be enabled to resist his power even though we are so fragile even though we're so vile so uh, fallen short even though we are fine flower you know we sometimes get to choose to do something for others be it's it's because of the interruption of God between Satan and us God is putting the enmity into our hearts so that we can be enabled to resist Satan's power again the reason why you are sitting here in front of this screen listening to God's word is not because is not because you are a good person or you are you are good but because of the power working in our hearts after sin came into this world our nature became completely changed right so in this time God said I will put enmity between you and the woman God promised to put in our hearts the Holy Spirit so that we can be inclined to the other side towards good you know even before sin came into this world our sinful nature was inclined to lean towards good things but there was not impossible for human beings to lean towards the other side and just like that you even after sin came into this world even though we are so inclined to lean towards the evil side it is not impossible for us to lean towards the other side and that is exactly the the uh, the power of the Holy Spirit in working in our heart you know um, Leviticus chapter 5 when when God gave like uh, additional regulations about sin offering here uh, but if he is not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons then he who sinned shall bring for his offering one tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a sin offering here we see one tenth of an ephah of fine flour being given as a sin offering again I want to kind of be reminded the fine flower means a state of sinners uh, like so vile so fallen low because it's it's been smashed by Satan it's been it's been marred by the power of Satan but still we have the longing desire to obey God's law that is the fine flower even though we have the longing desire we still can fall we still can sin of course it is sinning unintentionally we will talk more about unintentional sin or intentional sin when we come to sin offering uh, fine flour is the sin offering but fine flour with oil and prank, uh, frankincense is the grain offering that was an aroma to God so here Leviticus chapter 2 from verse 1 to when anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord his offering shall be of fine flour okay now we have um, we have the same understanding about this so fine flour represent a state of sinners the heart of sinners so vile so fallen low but still it has the uh, longing desire to obey God's law and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it he shall bring it to Aaron's sons the priest one of whom 
shall take from it his,、uh, his handful of fine flour and oil with all the frankincense. And the priest shall burn it as a memorial on the altar, burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. It is not only the longing desire, but we actually have to produce what God wants from us. But that can be produced only through oil and frankincense. Here, another regulation is added to the grain offering. No grain offering which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering to the Lord made by fire. Well, our Bible commentary says the same prohibition applied to honey. Fermentation is a symbol of corruption. Honey, as well as leaven, was used to produce fermentation, especially in the making of vinegar. Interpreters generally associate honey with the lust of the flesh, which may indeed be pleasing, but which contain the elements of corruption and are destructive of spiritual life. You know, when weak tribe made a covenant, they had to give the specific plan、uh, as to what to offer, what, how to offer, when to offer, and everything. You know, in their tributes, yeast and honey were not to be mixed because that brought about、uh, corruption, fermentation. And another regulation was added to the grain offering. These three kind of additional occasions or three means of grain offering. So, if you bring as an offering a grain offering baked in the oven, and baked in a pan, and baked in a covered pan, these three special occasions got added to. The grain offering, and I had to meditate on this point for a long time. Why did God add these three more regulations to the grain offering? God could have said,、um, "You have to bring your grain offering with fine flour mixed with oil and frankincense." God could have said,、uh, "That is the only thing that is acceptable." But God said, "Oh." Uh, okay, you can bring a grain offering baked in the oven, baked in a pan, baked in a covered pan, and I was able to、uh, find one clue in the New Testament because in First John said that for all that is in the world. John said there are three temptations, three things that every human being、uh, cannot but go through. That is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So all that is in the world is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So these three things are the things that all human kinds can not but go through. Not because God made that way, but because Satan makes us go through these temptations. And this is exactly what Eve had to go through when when Satan first tempted her. So Genesis chapter three, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, that it was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, the pride of life, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and ate. So, from Adam and Eve to the end of human history, Satan tempts every human being with these three things: 
We cannot uh, pass by all these three things. We just cannot but go through one of these three or all of these three. When God said you can bring a grain offering baked in the oven, baked in the pan, baked in a covered pan, God also said, "Ye shall be unleavened cakes of the fine flour mixed with oil. If your offering is a grain offering baked in a pan, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mixed with oil. You have to pour oil on it. If it is baked in a, pan, a covered pan, still with oil. So whenever we go through these temptations, we, the only way that can be a pleasing aroma to God is that we have to pour, we have to be mixed with the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, when, uh, when Jesus was here on earth, uh, he was tempted by Satan, these three things. In those days, he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. Imagine, you know, he fasted for 40 days. He must have been very hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. He was appealing to the lust of the flesh. Because he was so hungry, and he had the, the power of divinity. If Satan had not known that Jesus had the power of divinity, then, then he would not have asked this, right? So certainly Satan knew that Jesus was with the power of divinity. So, so he said, oh, turn this stone into bread because you're so hungry. And then the devil taking him up, up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. So he showed him all the kingdom, the beauty of the kingdom, the beauty of this world. The reason why Jesus came to this world, this, this earth, was because he wanted to restore the beauty of this world back to God. So he showed the old beauties to Jesus, say, oh, you know, you are here to receive this, restore this. So if you bow down before me i will give you this right so he was appealing he was appealing to the lust of the eyes then he brought him to jerusalem set him on the uh, pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down from here show your divinity so that you can you know show off you can have people follow you because of the power that you have so he was appealing to the pride of life. Desire of Ages, page 116. Ellen White comments this. Many look on this conflict between Christ and Satan as having no special bearing on their own life. For them, and for them, it has little interest. But within the domain of every, every human heart, this controversy is repeated in every human's heart. No exception. Never does one leave the ranks of evil for the service of God without encountering the assaults of Satan. The enticements which Christ resisted were those that we find it so difficult to withstand. You know, if we are aware of these three temptations, we find it so difficult to withstand. With the terrible weight of the sins of the world upon him, Christ withstood the test upon appetite, the lust of the uh, flesh, upon the love of the world, and upon the love of display, which leads to presumption. These were the temptations that overcame Adam and Eve, and that so readily overcome us. How did Jesus face these temptations? Three temptations. He overcame these three temptations with this. It is written. It is written. It is written. Just like God said to Moses, when your offering is baked in a pan, in an oven, in a covered pan, it needs to be mixed with oil. Jesus faced these temptations with only the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not that Jesus was able to overcome these temptations because he was God, 
But it was possible for him to overcome these temptations because he was mixed. He was put on the Holy Spirit. Like the burnt offering ultimately shows us what God would do for us. We talked about this like many times. Grain offering shows us what Jesus would do for us eventually too. How? Jesus became the fine flower. He became human being with all the weaknesses, all the infirmities caused by sin. Even though he became uh, the fine flower, even though he took the same uh, flesh that you and, you and I have, he always wanted to give himself mixed with the oil. And that's why he had to spend so much time in prayer. We should not say that, you know, Jesus, even though, you know, Jesus was without sin, right, when he became human. No, we, we should not make any excuses like this unless we spend time in prayer as much as Jesus. You know, um, the yard, the altar and basin in the yard represent entering into the covenant with oath. So when we are baptized, we make an oath. God, I've been touched by your faithfulness. I've been touched by your love. So I want to make a covenant. I want to follow your words. And if I fail, I know this is the very foundation of the whole universe, this principle. And if I fail to obey that, I know I'm going to be lost. But even though we make that burnt offering, even though we make that oath, we are so vile, we are so fragile, we have fallen so low, fallen so short. And then we have to go into the first part of the sanctuary. The first part of the sanctuary represents Christ's intercessory ministry to resolve sin problem. You know, when we enter in the first part of the sanctuary, the first thing that we see on the right side is the showbread. The right side is important because um, when Jesus met his disciples once again after he was resurrected, you know, he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. And then I said, Jesus had a purpose in beating them cast their net on the right side of the ship. On that side, he stood upon the shore. On that side, he stood. That was the side of faith. If we have the faith and enter into the sanctuary, we see Jesus standing there as the perfect grain offering. So the showbread, Jesus Christ, our perfect righteousness, freely given to us. It is us, actually, who are supposed to pay the pre tribute to God. But Jesus came to this earth and he became the fine flower. He became like one of us. And then he acted on the requirements on behalf of us to make the perfect grain offering. And he said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So he came down from heaven as the perfect grain offering. You now, grain offering is something that we are supposed to make and, and offer to God. But we all know that we are so vile and we have fallen so low and short. So we have nothing because we are poor in spirit. We have nothing in our heart to make what God wants to see us. We have nothing to bring to God for the promise. So we mourn. And that's exactly when we are comforted because He became like one of us. And then now we have something to bring to God for the promise. That is the showbread. The showbread is something that we can find only when we enter the first part of the sanctuary. Grain offering was fulfilled through Jesus Christ who had accomplished, who had fulfilled all our requirements we swear to do to God. So we just can't but love Jesus. 
who is the perfect grain offering, the showbread. I pray that um, all of us go into the first part of the sanctuary. You know, in order for us to go into the first part of the sanctuary, we first have to pass through the yard part. What does the yard represent? First, we have to make the covenant with God. Of course, it doesn't mean that we have to do certain things, but first, we have to bring our longing desire. Even though we may fall, even though we are so fragile, God sees the longing desire that we cherish in our heart. I want to do right things. I want to follow your words, your voice, but I know I cannot do it. Please God, take my heart and turn into the new heart. Of course, you know, making the new heart would be, will be fulfilled completely when Jesus comes back. But throughout the time that before Jesus comes back again, we are going through the process of sanctification, right? So that we can be like God, like Jesus more and more. So I really hope that we first go into the yard and then offer the burnt offering. And then we have to offer the grain offering too. We have to make promise. I will give you, I will pay the tribute to you. I will give the burnt off, I will give the, uh, the grain offering to you. But we find ourselves so weak and so vile. And we come to the cross, beating our heart. And Jesus will lead us into the first part of the sanctuary where we find the perfect gift the perfect grain offering showbread, Jesus Christ.